Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the Hive Hound and this is our first video back from our little break where we were off the internet for a while due to my house move and uh, it's fantastic to come back and see we've gained another 50 subscribers so thank you very much for all those uh, who have joined us and uh, I assure you I will do my best to keep the content coming and uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have a Texas gameplay in the background, uh, purely because, well, it's tier 4 and tier 4 rank battles. It's, you know, a bit of an important ship right now. Uh, but we're actually going to go through the frequently asked questions that have recently been published by Wargaming for those of you that have missed it. Um, so, um, let's get on with it. Um, so the first question: uh, Why do ships and um, uh, uh, why do ships disappear and fire out of nowhere? Now, Wargaming's answer was: We'll you know, check out this video. We've just published a video on it. Um, we'll explain it here really quickly. See that blue circle around my ship in the top left-hand corner? That's my detectability range. The white circle is my firing range. Now, for every single ship, this is different. Battleships, the blue circle's really large. Cruisers, usually a bit smaller. Destroyers, tiny. Now, if I fire my guns, and I will, you'll see that blue circle bloom out to the maximum range of my guns. So if I'm firing, you can see me from whatever my range is, you know, 15, 16 kilometers, whatever it happens to be in the Texas. Um, so that's how far away you can see me from. Uh, if I stop firing, and you're 14 kilometers away, but my detectability is only 13, I'm gonna disappear. If I'm behind an island and no other ship has a direct line of sight on me, I'm not gonna get spotted. So that's how you can fire out of nowhere. The Texas is a terrible example for this because battleships are generally big, slow, and usually out in the open. So you're not gonna, you're not really gonna see the benefits of, but it basically, if I don't shoot now, there, um, those three ships, see those three ships, uh, the uh, Koningsberg, which I happen to be aiming at right now, they cannot see me. So if I was behind an island now and I fired, they wouldn't see me, but I would have disappeared off their screen. So there, I hope that kind of explains it to you. Sneaky little bugger slowed down. So um, we hope, uh, right, okay, so uh, question. Uh, we hope there will be more PvE operations. Do you have any plans on this side? Uh, Saving Transylvania was a huge success. Um, so we're looking at more opportunities of this sort. Uh, it does, however, take a considerable amount of time and development manpower to iron out all the uh, nooks and crannies of such features. So new entries for alternative game modes are something that we will work on, uh, but there's no exact plans to share yet. So that tells me they're working on it and, you know, they're, they're, they're probably going to happen, but they're, they're keeping close-lipped on it. Uh, in all fairness, on the PC version, they seem to have... Uh, I can't remember exactly, but there may be 10 different PvE operations. There could be more. They do special event ones as well. Um, but they have a, a bunch, and they're, they're never new. They just recycle them each week. You've got a different operation to play. So I think we're going to probably see very much the same thing. Uh, okay, next question. Can we have bigger divisions? Uh, the thing is, with divisions, and I've said this um, whenever people have asked me about it, uh, the thing is, with divisions, two people uh, who play well together can make a, a, an impact on a match. Three people can win a match. Three people that are playing well, playing together, can win a match. Add a team of four, five, six people all working together, all communicating. The enemy's going to have absolutely no chance at all. What you're going to have, you're going to have a group, you're going to have a couple of groups then of these, you know, four, five, six people all playing together, all know what they're doing. And it's, it's just going to kill the game. Even if you're a good player, you're not going to defeat a team of reasonable players. That are actually working together so personally i think it's an awful idea to have bigger divisions uh as much as i'd love to play with more people uh we're just gonna have to wait for ranked battles which they have announced uh ranked battles um 
Ah, oh, what am I talking about? Jeez, not ranked. What am I on about? Clan. Clan battles. Uh, which I'm assuming they haven't actually answered, but I'm assuming it's going to be 7v7, kind of like the, the ranked setup. But that is going to... They, they did say ranked battles are coming, so it is something that we're, uh, we're going to see, and that's going to allow large teams to work together uh, and on a level playing field against other large teams of people playing together and it's going to become more tactical it's going to become a lot more fun it's going to be really interesting when that comes out uh next question can we get manual secondaries um we understand that there are some ships that would benefit from a play style focused on secondaries uh, we are not yet, however, clear on the correct implementation and uh, whether it be control method or simply improving effectiveness. We're going to give this question more in-depth look in 2020. Um, I've talked about this um, on several videos when we've talked about the Bismarck and things like that. Um, personally, I don't know how they're going to set it up on the controller. Uh, on PC, you've got man manual secondary fire control. Um, that's because... Uh, well, you've got a keyboard. You have a vast array of buttons that you can uh, set up different things. You, you, know, you can turn your A guns off to not get spotted by aircraft. And on a, on a controller, we just don't have that many options. So I think it would be ridiculously difficult to implement. Um, and I think the best way to do it is to, to just give our secondaries a bit of a buff. Maybe if you've got the... Um, secondary mod uh that it, it gives a greater buff to accuracy you know maybe not the same buff that manual fire control will but you know some sort of middle ground to make our secondaries that bit more effective and that wyoming just got an absolute paddling in the background so potential counter spotting damage uh counters and received pbs uh, is the next question uh, definitely something that would be nice to have but there's no ETA on such counters yet uh, as realistically they would change much if we're honest however you can expect some combat missions taking potential damage into account relatively soon so yeah now on PC it's different on PC you've got the option to you know you can manually change the size of your minimap you can adjust you can adjust almost everything visually uh, and how your heads up, you know, your HUD is displayed uh, on console. But we're not going to have that option. Um, we're not. Um, it's every single console is the same, and but everyone's TV is different. You could be playing this on a, you know, a twenty-inch game, a twenty-one-inch gaming monitor, or you could be playing it on a, a, a you know, hundred and ten-inch home theater system. Um, so how do you? get the correct ratios to have that much information on the screen um i think that you know there will be a you know a potential damage counter or a spot and damage counter calculated in the background but uh, and hopefully that'll affect our xp uh, which it should um but as for actually getting it all displayed um again it, you know how are they going to do it how are they going to do it so it's readable it's bad enough you can't see the uh <laughs> the, the the um uh the lead the points based on teams uh if there happens to be clouds in the sky so uh so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves there um will there be any game play affecting weather effects coming to legends um there are no such plans yet uh they have introduced some weather effects uh they've you know introduced day night rain uh in some of the new maps um but they don't affect the game. Uh, basically, what they're saying is there's uh, to change to add weather would game affecting weather effects. Um, it, it would basically they'd, they'd have to pretty much reprogram the game um, and uh, to have different weathers. So uh, it's uh, uh, so different weather visuals are still something we'll have, but they're not looking at adding uh, weather effects that changes that affect gameplay um which nation is likely to be the next added our lips are sealed on this one sorry <laughs> obviously it's gonna happen they're not gonna they're not gonna give away uh what ships that uh, that come next they've not done it uh up until now um why why would they change 
Um, so that's that question that's answered very quickly. I'd like to see the Russians, to be honest with you. I think the Russians uh, will be coming because they're pretty they're, they're they're pretty versatile ships. They're not like the the British cruisers, which you know are are quite demanding uh, on the player. Um, I think a lot of people they are right. A lot of people will think they're underpowered because they're you know light cruisers with no high explosive it's a very very different play style so there i don't know i personally i think they might be waiting for the british heavy cruisers which are being released on pc or announced to be released on pc so maybe we'll get the uh, the uh, the heavy the heavy cruisers rather than the light cruisers that would be really cool uh, for us to get them first uh, to be honest with you i'd like to see that uh, where is the Yamato? Uh, we are preparing a streamlined test event that will allow uh, you to try the Yamato in battle uh, by the end of the year. Um, yes, that's soon. Uh, you'll have to play play it for a bit to get used to her and then you'll be allowed to take her out in battle. You won't be able to buy her this year or own her this year, but in 2020 you will. Um, and uh, it, the event will help us understand how to implement it. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming as soon as rank battles are finished, we're going to see the Yamato in the game. Uh, and a perfect follow-up question. Any news about the Jean Bart? Now, the Jean Bart is also a very high-tier battleship. And uh, she's, uh, their answer is she's, uh, she is a lean, mean, high-tier French battleship, which you will get to meet this year again soon. So I think what we're going to have is because the Yamato has got no natural predators apart from destroyers obviously but there's nothing going to be on the same tier if anything from the test uh, where it appeared in uh, in AI battles with its 97,000 hit points uh, came into it uh, we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna see that uh, you know no natural predators so we're gonna uh, we're gonna see the the Jean Bart versus the Yamato in some kind of game mode i think we're going to see pve first uh because as you have to get used to them before you can take them out in the battle or maybe a pve campaign uh missions you know like uh, like the transylvania uh and it's going to be up against the jean bart so it's going to have a natural predator it's going to have something that can go toe to toe to it with it uh so uh with the boy scene now in the game uh do you think the mogami could receive her five times three one five five millimeter guns and if not why not and we did answer this on live stream when badger was ask, asking me the questions and seeing what sort of answers i'd give and, and I'd, i was pretty much mirroring them uh the whole time uh so uh uh no um there's no point the megami is perfectly fine uh her torpedoes are, are great her fire starter abilities are very high uh, and uh, the Mogami holds the cruiser damage record uh, on consoles that's still unbroken. So why do you need to change it? It's an absolute beast as it is. I'm, I'm a big fan of the Mogami myself. So yeah, I'd, I'd hate to see. I'd, 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 yeah, there's just no need. It, there's, it's just not necessary. It's more than good enough as it is. Um, some modules and upgrades like main armament mod one and others are missing in legends compared to the pc are there any plans to add such uh some upgrades uh this is the answer some upgrades like the durability ones for destroyers are actually built in uh some were removed or not added because they were always the default choice so um basically on pc what they discovered is like everyone in a destroyer will run these mods everyone in a cruiser will run these mods so it's just like yeah right okay well there's no point in having them because that's what they're going to use so some of them they've added to the ships anyway um some of them they haven't i would like to see more uh options for modifications to give us tips for us to be able to change up the play styles um uh the, the um damage the um fire rate booster would be absolutely lovely to see sorry about that so will legends ever add more historical commanders for each existing nation right there's other nations to add they're going to add the other nations first and all the new nations so you're going to have uh you know you're going to have the the, the Rep chinese republic you're going to have the italians you can have the um oh the the soviets uh, you can have the pan-asians uh you know there's there's a lot of other navies 
uh, still to add to this game uh, and they're all going to have their own commanders so they're, they're going to do those commanders first and there we go <laughs> nice crack and unleash there in the background so they're going to do those first and then well you know possibly uh, they'll add more but will they need to by the time all the other nations have come out uh, right okay so on to the next question uh, when will we be able to select our own ports uh, best answer ever probably uh, when it will be a prevailing issue uh, in the feedbacks so basically what they're saying nobody's asked to select our own ports so we've not bothered so if you want it if you want you want to be able to pick your own ports then get get on it start messaging on the forums and sending feedback i want to be able to pick my own port um and i'm fed up of you deciding for me uh, but do we we don't really spend that much time in port so we're, we're out there on the seas battling so i don't think it's uh i don't think it's a big thing uh uh azura lane co collaboration question mark uh not impossible but nothing to share regarding any collabs yet Right, so for anyone going, uh, well, what? Uh, on the PC version, um, if you've played World of Tanks, you'll know you had like you you had some uh, like the Dark Horse comic tanks. Uh, we also had the Girls and Panzer, um, uh, Panzer IV tank. Uh, basically, uh, Azura's Lane. Uh, since actually the stream where Badger asked me this question, I've actually went and had a look, and essentially, uh, Azura Lane is a um it's an anime where um the the battleships uh, or the various ships uh that from world war ii have been turned into female characters uh that interact with each other and uh yeah um, <laughs> it's i've not watched it um but so basically it's it's an anime uh, about the ships and given the ship's life given the ship's personality in the form of uh, of women in naval academies uh, how they interact with each other and how you know someone brag about how big my guns are and it's like yeah my guns may be smaller but my yeah, i've got these and you know my my, my torpedoes can wreck you and they just interact with each other and there's sort of uh <laughs> this sort of you know you know sort of friendly groups of you know similar nations similar ships sort of sort of team together and and rivalries much like you know, the the banter you'll see on uh on Facebook groups when people are like defending my Iowa is the Iowa is the greatest ship in the world and then you've got no the Bismarck Bismarck my secondaries will burn you you know that kind of thing so it's it's it uh, so yeah uh, check it out if it's something you're interested in uh, obviously <laughs> uh, if not then that, well forget about it but you know the PC do have co uh, collaborations with them where basically the ships have the the camouflage systems off the I think they're actually off the uh the 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 car the the anime series no real difference between the ships it's just they come with a cool camel um why is it that french ships high tier cruisers and the terrible do not have the main battery reload booster consumable so artillery wise the french have turned out to be very effective in their game uh same can be said for the terrible uh, which on top of its pretty gimmicky, uh, intentionally gimmicky design, uh, is no denying that the unique consumable adds flavour to the gameplay, uh, but also there's the age-old question of uh, balancing anything. I've been playing a lot of the French cruisers lately, and I've been really, really enjoying them. And yeah, you don't need uh, the uh, uh, the uh, battle sh uh, the battery reload booster consumable they are so capable um it, it it would break the game for you know the 30 seconds or whatever it runs for it will allow you to absolutely annihilate any other cruiser so it it, it would it would it would it would be unfair uh horns honk no no <laughs> war game is saying horns are cool and sometimes useful uh but there are things we need to focus on before we go all silly uh until uh, we get it, <laughs> until we get it Hong Kong to you, captains. Yeah, no, horns are necessary on PC because you have uh, team damage. If you crash into your friendly ships, you're going to cause damage to them and damage to yourself, which is no good. So the horns there as a, you know, as an indicator, it's like, yo, I'm, 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 I can't avoid you. Like, pay attention. I'm right here. You need to, you need to help me out here and you need to move. 
so um, or we get we get enough people like some you hardly ever see but some people do use the uh, the chat wheel uh, to actually uh, tactically point out things on the map and try and get people to focus ships uh, but how many times do you hear set a smoke screen set a smoke screen set some, oh Neptune's beard oh Neptune set a smoke screen ah uh, stone the crows people spamming it they're gonna do exactly the same with the horn so please please never give them the horn <laughs> uh, any plans to add more historical camouflages to the tech tree uh, they've already done it and they point this out quite uh, quite quickly uh, as a matter of fact all the permanent cameras available for the German and French ships in the store uh, or the Admiralty are historical adaptations uh, there's a, a very good chance that the future editions will follow this rule uh, so uh, we hope this article was helpful and stay tuned so yeah if you want a historically accurate camel buy it is essentially what they're saying and they will bring up more but you gotta buy them which fair enough it's their prerogative it's it's their game and uh, you know yeah they need they need to get paid uh, so uh, there will be more historical as historically accurate camels and they uh, they will come in the guise of uh, purchasable items or um, through Admiralty, so yeah, your Franks or your Deutschmarks, or you know whatever the current campaign is uh, is giving away, you will be able to get them through there. So uh, thank you very much for sticking with us, and uh, I hope you found this informative and uh, and enjoyed it. And well, until next time, take care.